try. I'll get you, my pretty, and your little dog, too. Can you even have a great movie without a great villain? Uh, okay, maybe you can, but it's not nearly as much fun. A thunderbolt! I'm sending it back to hell where it belongs. Were you in love with her, beast? And that's true even for non-Disney movies. Human beings define their reality through misery and suffering. Oh, is this your game? I'm your number one fan. I won't touch Barton, not until I make him kill you. Slowly, intimately. So it's no surprise that when a thousand film industry pros were asked about the greatest villain of all time, their choice was Emperor Pal- Wait. Good morning. He's not even on the list? Balls! Idiots! Imbeciles! Could they really not find space for a villain who emerged from across the gulf of time to settle an epic grudge hiding in plain sight until he could twist the hero of the movie into his personal pawn in order to enslave the universe to his will? What exactly is being overlooked here? Is it the scope of Palpatine's plan? Because after all, a villain is only as good as his plan. Do I really look like a guy with a plan? By the time of the Phantom Menace, the, uh, Phantom Menace, is about to execute the next step in his plan to take full control of the galaxy. And no one has any idea. They're all way too focused on the political process to see Palpatine's scheme unfolding right before their eyes. Oh, hey, maybe they could start a YouTube channel. His evil scheme is he really wants Queen Amidala to sign a paper. I have never known the plot of this movie until now, after having watched this movie for 20 years. Okay. I don't get it. Imbeciles! Unfortunately, Palpatine isn't the type to just drop out of the sky and announce his plan to destroy civilization. You are about to die at the hands of the children of Thanos. Why should he? He's got the Republic exactly where he wants it. And the Jedi think the Sith's return is... Impossible. The Sith have been extinct for a millennium. A millennium is a long time to be planning revenge. That would be like if the descendants of Genghis Khan came back now to take revenge on... Russia? When the Sith went extinct, it was clearly at the hands of a dangerous, capable Jedi Order. And it sounds like whatever happened then is part of what created the Republic. This Republic that stood for a thousand years... That's why the Jedi seem so confident. And yet, the Sith seem pretty sure of themselves too. At last we will reveal ourselves to the Jedi. At last we will have revenge. That's because the Jedi Order has lost a step. Now they're just an inflexible hierarchy making arbitrary decisions from a literal ivory tower. The Force is strong with him. He is to be trained then? No, he will not be trained. Whatever they were before, there's little more than a ghost left of it now. As Dave Filoni says, this sense that the Jedi have lost their mission is what makes Qui-Gon's death so tragic. What's at stake is really how Anakin's going to turn out. Because Qui-Gon is different than the rest of the Jedi, and you get that in the movie, and Qui-Gon is fighting because he knows he's the father that Anakin needs. But instead of that father, Anakin gets this one. The chosen one, the boy may be. But agree with your taking this boy as your Padawan learner? I do not. The rest of the Jedi are so detached and they've become so political that they've really lost their way. Mm-hmm. And Yoda starts to see that in the second film. But Qui-Gon is ahead of them all. That's, that's a failing for Anakin. He doesn't have the, the family that he needs. So he's left completely vulnerable. What will happen to me now? Palpatine steps into that role of guidance for Anakin, filling his head with a very different idea of destiny. You are the most gifted Jedi I have ever met. I see you becoming the greatest of all Jedi, Anakin. I will be the most powerful Jedi ever. I promise you. And since Anakin's relationships grow increasingly strained, both with the Jedi Council and with Obi-Wan... That was some shortcut, Anakin. Good job. Palpatine is the only person who truly believes in Anakin's potential. And so... They've finally given you an assignment. Your patience has paid off. In fact, he's essentially the only person from the entire Republic who's ever shown him any support. The Republic's anti-slavery laws are... The Republic doesn't exist out here. 
In many ways, the prequels are the story of an arrogant religion who get a hold of the Messiah and then accidentally hand him over to the devil. The war doesn't go well either. What we get to see of the Clone Wars is pretty sick. There's a reason people wanted more of it. Like, a lot more of it. This is a really good show, by the way. I wonder why it's so... Oh, that's right. But for the story Lucas was telling, the only things that really matter about the Clone Wars are how they begin and how they end. That's certainly all that matters to Palpatine. You know the funny thing about this promise? I will not let this republic be split in two. He kept it. It's ironic. There were never two sides to the war. Of course, it looks like you have Dooku and the Separatists and Grievous versus the Jedi and the clones and the Republic. But the reality is all of these people are fighting for the same guy. This guy. This one right here. It was a proxy war. It was a sham. A manufactured crisis that made hypocrites out of the Jedi. We're keepers of the peace, not soldiers. Destabilized planets across the galaxy. He is here. We are being held hostage. And extended the range of Palpatine's control. Listen to the music here. This is the birth of the Empire. This is why Palpatine plunged the galaxy into the fog of war and made peacekeepers forget their purpose. Politics. And the Jedi just stood by and watched, seemingly ignorant of the real game being played. They totally missed the importance of uh, wait, it's here somewhere. Oh yeah, the Chosen One. The Jedi's fate is inextricably connected to Anakin's. And who is the only person he trusts? Not them. My trust in them has been shaken. But they don't see this. They don't see a lot of things. Blind we are. They kind of look like idiots, honestly. Chancellor Palpatine, Sith Lords are our speciality. Imbeciles! They don't notice when Palpatine uses Anakin to siphon their power away. And when they finally discover the truth... A Sith Lord? They rush in in a very un-Jedi-like manner. You're going slowly on the left. Taking now! No, Anakin, no! They just assume that it's going to go the same way it did a thousand years ago. <laughs> and the Jedi Council's rejection of Anakin... You're on this council, but we do not grant you the rank of Master. What? ...comes back to haunt them. No! No! <laughs> When Palpatine activates Order 66, the Jedi who scoffed at the idea of the Siths returning from extinction are annihilated in a matter of minutes, most of them never knowing how deep their failure truly went. And now, the path was clear for Palpatine to become Emperor. With thunderous applause. He promises the galaxy... Security and continuing stability. <laughs> Although we get to see the fates of those who Palpatine previously promised security to. Lord Sidious promised us peace. The only one. <laughs> Palpatine's final victory is almost unmatched in its scope. Revenge of the Sith is like a Renaissance painting of Judgment Day, where the Republic's political and spiritual powers crumble into nothing and its hero tries to murder his wife before crossing swords with his brother and being consumed by wrath. You were my brother, Anakin! I hate you! And when it's all over, Palpatine swoops into hell like the angel of death, and Darth Vader is born. As the last person in the galaxy who still believes he has any good in him dies. Who is Palpatine's competition, exactly? Satan? because that's basically who Palpatine is. He dragged the most promising Jedi down to the fires of hell, returning him to the state of slavery he was born in, as a machine with a skull where his face used to be. And I'm telling you, this finale, it's unbelievable how tepid contemporary art seems compared to the passionate quality of this finale. So you have this like huge, like it's like romantic nature painting, apocalyptic landscape of the lava. Lucas cross cuts the destruction of the Senate chamber. And you have the destruction of industry going on. And then after all these horrors, it is so beautiful. I'm saying, oh my God, 
Nothing in the last 30 years in any of the arts has been produced as emotionally compelling and significant as the finale of Revenge of the Sith. In other words, the only thing that eclipses the scope of Palpatine's villainy is the scope of Star Wars itself. Thanks for watching. All your comments have been a huge encouragement to the channel, so please don't stop. And feel free to subscribe if you don't want to miss hearing about an underappreciated aspect of a Star Wars movie that is a little bit older than this one.